moditas de cortar Seis de varios colores Mis flores para tu altar Casera traigo mis flores Acabaditas de cortar Las seis de varios colores Mis flores para tu altar El girasol como llama para tu ocho Y la rosa en la cara la dio matala Príncipe de pura sangre para chango Así ya te ponen Good evening, good morning, and good afternoon, whatever time it is where you are. Thank you for joining us for another episode of The Divination Table. I'm your host, Michael Lennon, and tonight's guest, Professor Charles Porterfield, is a no-nonsense old-school, Old Testament reader and root worker. His work has been published in The Black Folder, Personal Communications on the Mystery, or I'm sorry, The Mastery of Hoodoo. He is also a co-author of Hoodoo, Bible Magic, Sacred Secrets of Scriptural Sorcery, and the author of a dark, I'm sorry, a deck of spells, Hoodoo Playing Card Magic in Root Work and Conjure and the Sporting Life, How to Help Yourself with Hoodoo from the Streets to the Sheets. His work includes Biblical and Psalmic Magic, Prescriptions, Root Work, consultations, pendulum, playing cards, and Bible divination. Does custom-made mojo bags, candle work, spiritual cleansings, and lame tricks, and work for conditions, interpreting signs and dreams, magical coaching, giving out lucky numbers, making of lamps, and good old-fashioned plain sense sense. I'm sorry, plain sense (laughs) advice. Let me reach out and grab our wonderful guest... Good day and welcome to the Divination Table. How are you, my friend? I'm fine. How are you? I am doing wonderful. I am so glad to have you here on the show. I'm honored to be on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I've been looking forward to it. You have some incredible things listed on your website, and you are a very intelligent and well-known person in the community. I'm the one that feels honored having you. <laughs> uh, well, thank you very much. It's very kind of you. So tell us a little bit about yourself and what it is that you do. 
<clears throat> well, I am primarily a, a, a conjure doctor. That's what I would call myself. I, uh, I practice hoodoo, and I uh, live in uh, Denton, Texas, and uh, born and raised uh, Texan. And uh, I don't know what else the hell to say to you. <laughs> <laughs> I read cards. Uh, that's about it. I mean, I've, I've, I've had a radio show before uh, for a number of years. I'm no longer doing uh, but uh, this is just uh, what I do with uh, what I have, and it's uh, it's uh, an interesting and strange ride. <laughs> that it always is. So how did you get into divination? Because I know there's a story about it with your grandparents and growing up down in Texas. Well, I uh, what's interesting about that is my mother uh, is actually a, a card reader. And was a, a professional card reader in uh, Houston uh, back in the 70s. And so I grew up around uh, – and she primarily reads uh, uh, tarot cards. And uh, I grew up around tarot cards. Uh, you know, they were always in the house. They were always being looked at or talked about. And, uh, you know, as long as I was careful with them, I was allowed to even play with them as a child to look at the images and all of that. And so this idea of divination, of being able to look ahead, look back, or look into what is uh, hidden, was never uh, how do I, it was never a new thing. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't yes. like some startling thing. It was just a part of life. Uh, my uh, great grandmother also uh, read cards a little, uh, but I never was around that much. Uh, mostly what I was around was watching her play game after game after game of solitary uh, <laughs> or patience, as she called it, which is its proper name. And so, I, you know, I never – I don't have one of these great stories, you know, about like, oh, you know, I was in the woods and like an elk came to me <laughs> or something. And, uh, no, nothing like that ever happened. It was just always a part of life, you know, that you could look ahead, that you could look behind, you could see what was uh, hidden. And so uh, when I first started reading uh, tarot cards, I was gifted my mother's uh, original deck and had them for many, many years and treasured them and used them as I slowly went from that phase, you know, where, oh, I'll just read for my pals to where, you know, oh, well, somebody thinks I'm good enough to give me money uh, to read for them. And then uh, a kind of startling thing happened. <clears throat> I um, met uh, uh, Mr. Charles Hansen, and Mr. Charles Hansen lived in Georgia. He's no longer with us. May his memory be a blessing. And he read playing cards, and he became my great teacher of that and a number of other things. And uh, I actually have his deck as well that after he passed, his grandchildren sent to me. And so as I started to read playing cards – I just found they worked better for me. Uh, you know, the, I had always had some difficulties with the tarot. It was a little too uh, psychological, a little too ephemeral. You know, I can understand that. I have the same issues myself for years. I just could not wrap my head around the tarot. I always read a deck of. They're kind of like the Grand Jew Lenormand. They are from the 1850s that my grandmother found at an auction. Not even knowing, oh, Michael will like this. Came home, right. and that was the deck I read with freers. You know, I love to be able to cherish things. You know, especially things that are either handed down or given to you as a gift, because they have a very special spiritual connection and meaning. Well, what's interesting is I actually no longer have the original tarot deck that my mother had. I returned it to her. Uh, she went back to reading uh, uh, professional reading and is a reader again uh, to this day. And so I just I handed them back off. I said, here, I've kept yep. these for you. Um, and for me, the issue was that, you know, I was able to read them well enough. And there's certainly a great depth to uh, the Tarot imagery. Yes. Uh, in fact, for me, there's a little too much damn depth. <laughs> uh, and... I found that they was getting real, you know, and the way people read these days, no, you know, not trying to offend anybody. There's this whole like, you know, Joseph Campbell Jungian thing going on. 
And I was getting tired of that, you know? I mean, I had a situation where I, rather than laying down three cards for somebody, you know, who's come to me and said, oh, I'm having trouble with my husband. And I look at the three cards and I go, well, yes, I see that there's trouble, but this is about learning about who you are and how you honor yourself and what about your own. This card talks about, you know, typical tarot reading. I, I much preferred, you know, the laying down three playing cards and going, he cheating on you. And he cheating on you with that bitch at work. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it was just easier. You know, I mean, it's just clearer messages. But I will say that there is a reputation that is, surrounds playing card readings, which I have found to be completely true. And therefore, I don't try to dissuade that reputation at all, which is that they give almost brutal readings. Yes. Uh, you know, there's just no time, right? It's just like, boom. You know, am I going to do? Yes. Am I? No. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Uh, they are straightforward, clear. you know, and I, just like my antique cards, they were very brutal, and that's the way they read for me, and that's the style I've always had, is like yours. I don't candy coat, I don't sugar coat. I tell it exactly how it is, where it is, this is what's happening. I find for myself, being somewhat linear, that too much for me is too much. You know, I I like things easier. I like things that I don't have to delve into my psyche too much for. Well, I also, I, for me, I also found that playing card readings are, whereas they are more direct, they are also surprisingly much more complex than tarot card readings uh, because they are not as solid or stationary or singular as a singular tarot card a singular tarot card this is its meaning okay okay mm -hmm. maybe you have reverse cards some people do read with the reversals or not and that's it okay there you go and then how does it fit into the story along the path of these cards that's not true in my experience uh with the american style of reading playing cards in them you can have a terrible card ace of spades Okay, Ace of Spades, and it depends on what cards surround it. Will alter its meaning, will change its meaning. You know, I mean, I, I sit sometimes with people. I'm reading for them, and you know, I've got to put down this card, and it's a really good card, and you don't have to be, you know, initiated into any secrets to look at the Ten of Hearts and go, "Yay, the Ten of Hearts!" And they're like, "Oh, hooray, the Ten of Hearts!" I'm like, "Yeah, yeah," but it's right next to the Ten of Spades. You know, what I mean. <laughs> In other words, its meaning changes, and so you're not just dealing with 52, or if you read with a joker as I do, 53 uh, meanings. You're dealing with other meanings, and I prefer, when possible, to read in a run, and uh, if I can explain that for yes, a moment. Yes, please. Uh, so from the Tarot, what we gained is something that I somewhat dislike, which is patterns. Okay, layouts, all right? The Celtic cross, the this, the that. Oh, it should be shaped like a bird in flight. Okay, whatever. And that is not the traditional way of reading playing cards. The traditional American way of reading playing cards is in a run, which means you shuffle the deck, you may cut the deck different ways. How you acquire the cards depends on each person. And then you just lay them out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Some people read seven cards in a run. Some people will read 11 cards in a run, etc. And you just read them in that run. They're just in a straight line. Okay. Right. There's not, uh, you know, oh, it should be shaped. You know, it's like a, a, sometimes I look at all these different patterns and I'm like, it's like a, a box of Lucky Charms, you know. Oh, it's a horseshoe. It's a, it's a crescent moon. It's a, you know, whatever. And the problem with layouts and patterns with playing cards is it denies you the ability to read multiple sets of cards. What three cards in three twos in a row, three kings, four kings, two kings, the uh, one one red queen and one black queen together? Because you're forcing the cards into a pattern, right? And so uh, that means that now we have.